Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to another Bloomerang Academy class. Today, we're going to be discussing uh, design tips with mass email. So we've had a few classes before, um, really in regards to how to use mass emails, how to filter and send um, and segment your audiences, as well as how to um, position yourself during this uh, the COVID-19 uh, crisis we're going through now. Um, but today is going to be more in line of how to design your emails. Um, so a little bit more of the creative side, um, a little bit more subjective, but there are going to be some overall tips and practices that we're going to be sharing today. Um, that way you get the best out of your mass emails that are being sent out. And there's a picture of me. So I'm a, a team lead here in the support department. I'm at Bloomerang. Been here for almost two years now. Um, love being able to be a part of these academy videos and academy classes um, and be able to instruct and just offer any guidance and any tips. Uh, but I am just like a normal person. So I'm, even though there's lots of robots out there, I'm not one of them. Um, so I enjoy doing everything that normal people do, biking and cracking jokes with my dog. He can't speak English, uh, but he's pretty good at understanding my jokes. Okay, and just in, so you know where you're at, we are doing uh, email design today if you just joined. Um, so pr primarily just design tips. And here's our agenda for today. First, I wanted to show why mass emails matter. Um, a lot of times we think it might just be a, a task that we make ourselves do, um, but sending mass emails will generate results for your nonprofit. Um, so we're gonna look at that real quick. We're gonna look at some tips and some samples um, of some good emails and maybe some not so great emails. Um, and then we're also gonna be looking at some best practices. And then finally, we're gonna spend a majority of our time today in designing an email. Um, and what we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you an example and then how I got there. So step-by-step step, how you could design an email from scratch um, all the way to something that um, you're happy with and you're ready to send um, to your constituents. And we'll also have some links to some article and content resources. I won't go over those in details, but those will be available after the class um, We'll have the links ready for you. So here's the first slide. I, just I really wanted to share this with everyone. Um, this is how revenue has changed for, this is specifically our customers. So Bloomerang um, customers um, sending emails between March and April of 2020. Um, so this is comparing March and April 2020 to March and April of 2019. Um, so you might be asking yourself whether or not now is the right time to bother your supporters with more emails. They, you probably think they're getting plenty of emails as is. But when we pulled this data, we see that customers who sent emails um, this year raised anywhere between nine uh, to almost 28, so 27.46% more money than they did in March and April of 2019. Um, so I, I do know that mass emails are only one channel. There's obviously letters, there's phone calls, there's even in-person meetings, which can be tough at the current circumstances. Um, but sending emails, as you can see in that the third column there, those that did not send any Bloomerang emails this year, um, specifically in March and April, are overall down by uh, about 8% compared to last year. So getting that touch, getting that communication out and sharing the good things that your organization is doing um, will make a difference and will help generate more revenue for your nonprofit. So just food for thought um, with this slide here. Next, we have just uh, overall some design tips. Um, so here's just four takeaways that we're really gonna be driving home today. Um, and particularly is just to reinforce your message. So that's not to say to cut off your message, but rather to simplify it, to emphasize it, um, and not to completely um, inundate your your constituents with too much information, but um, to make sure that they can get the snippet, get the idea of your message quickly. Um, this is also a link. The second part is limitations of HTML. There are certain things you just can't do with mass email and in particularly HTML email. Um, so a lot of times we think anything is possible with mass email. We wanna add as much as we can, but there are some limitations with inboxes, um, with how things will perform by what the content you add. Um, such as um, a lot of people want to have an embedded video or embedded audio. So once you open up the email that it, it plays um, some audio or it plays a video automatically. And across the board, that's, that's generally not something that's supported across inboxes. So trying to add those types of elements is, is gonna 
cause issue most likely. Um, so understanding those limitations, and I would highly encourage us to check out that article, um, will help you understand how you can simplify your email and, and where the parameters are um, for what you can send. And again, the, the idea today is to keep things simple. Um, not only just in your message, but also in the design. So many times we want to share everything. We want to have lots of images from an event that occurred or um, give them many options for giving or to send as many links as we can to give them options. Um, and sometimes too much can be a bad thing and we want to keep things very simple and, and make it clear what, they're, um, what your constituents are supposed to take the next step. And, and lastly, and this is an important point is to design with mobile devices in mind. Um, we found that the majority of emails um, are being opened on a mobile device. So only previewing and testing emails on a desktop um, is not gonna be as, as a good of a testing um, platform as, as you can with, by sending a, a test email to your mobile device, checking out the preview, um, the mobile preview that we have that tool available now in Bloomerang. Um, but you want to make sure that your emails are going to look and render well on a mobile device. And so here's here's an, an, a, a subcategory, so readability. Um, in, in today's world, uh, we don't, as you know, we, we all get lots of emails every day, um, probably too many. And so um, it's, it's important to make sure you get an impact um, with your email marketing. Um, and so especially with our marketing messages as a nonprofit, um, if your subscriber and your recipient is interested enough in your subject line and they open your message, you, it needs to be clear without actually reading the entire email what they're supposed to do. So we're gonna take a look at that later, but um, it's just important that there are clear headlines, that the call to action buttons are clear, uh, make sure things are in bullet pointed lists and links are easily accessible and they can scan through the email quickly without feeling bored, without feeling overwhelmed. So here's some general guidelines for readability is to make sure the readers can move across the page well, um, keep fonts simple, two fonts max, maybe three colors max across the email. If you have too much, uh, too many font sizes and colors, um, it might be a little bit distracting. Keep links obvious um, and also just try to keep things simple um, and, and shorten where you can. Another subcategory um, or Another tip that we have is the 60-40 text to image ratio. Um, so this is sort of a, just a general guideline, but um, you wanna make sure that it's not fully images. So uh, images are great. And as the old saying, they're worth a thousand words, um, but your entire email should not just be composed of images. I've seen sometimes some nonprofits, they might have a really nice looking newsletter that's an image and they'll just only include one image and then send that. The problem is, is that many times spam filters uh, could catch that and, and block that email from hitting the inbox. Um, spam filters tend to not like emails that are only images, um, or if they're especially heavy in images and very few text. So a best practice that's floating around is, uh, speci specifically in the marketing sphere, is to have a 60 to 40, so mostly text, and a little less than half of images in your email. Um, the theory is formulated because spammers sometimes display information in large images instead of text so that filter programs can't read the content. Um, not saying you can never use images, but just to make sure your, your email is not 100% or even 90% images only. And lastly, use alt text. Um, people may have the setting turned off to load images on their device, or they might have a setting, um, maybe possibly in their email provider that doesn't load images automatically. So you wanna make sure the alt text is there, which is essentially a label for that image. So when they see that box, or if they see that empty space, um, they know it's not just not rendering correctly, but that the image is supposed to be there and that alt text is gonna be describing it. And just some real quick pointers for images. Um, we do recommend using Chrome as far as um, building your emails. Um, Firefox is fine too. We try to uh, recommend and encourage not to use um, Internet Explorer. Uh, we, we see that Chrome has the best uh, performance when it comes um, to using our editor and being able to test things. Um, as far as images, uh, for those that are gonna be full width or maybe a header or a banner image, try to keep those between five and 800 pixels. 
And again, we have some details as far as a two column layout or a thin wide layout, um, trying to keep those ratios at smaller sizes. Really large images can have trouble sending. They can slow down how fast your email goes out, um, as well as if, if depending on how they hit the inbox of your recipient, um, it's better to make sure those load quickly um, and efficiently. Okay, now I wanna go to a, a sample. And um, here you can see, this is an email newsletter from the National Parks Conservation Association. Um, and this is from 2014. Now it, it's not, it's not um, too distracting, but you can see that there is a lot of information. Um, you can see on the left side, there's a banner image. Uh, there is some three column layouts. There's some small links on the right side. Um, there's a donate button inside the banner. Um, it really is, it's almost like they're trying to recreate their website in an email. And, and to me, and I would say to most, it's a little too busy. Um, it's hard to understand what you need to focus on. Should I focus on donating? Should, am I supposed to focus on viewing the slideshow or reading these articles? Or perhaps am I supposed to um, check out um, some of the articles down on the near the bottom um, and to learn more? And it's even hard to see some of those orange links as they kind of are hidden below some of the text. So the next action is a little hard to, to make out. Um, now, if we go to their 2016 newsletter, so if I jump ahead, Here's a, a newsletter from this exact same organization, but they've made some updates. So you can see the difference between their previous one uh, and just a, an updated, a little bit more simplified. So you can see that donate button is the only thing that's orange on that page. So you can tell that's probably a major action they're wanting to have their recipients take. Um, and then you can see there's really just one large story. There's that featured parks images with the view of the slideshow. So you can really see that the, the message and what they're trying to emphasize um, is this particular slideshow. But then they also have these top stories and it's very clear to see that there are you know, four stories and there are um, action buttons right below each paragraph. So it's, it's not too busy. Um, everything is clean, it's skimmable. Um, everything's uniform in color. Notice that all the buttons are the same green. There's that one orange button that's more emphasized. Photos are aligned. Um, and it's not too boring either. Um, it's, a, it's a fast email to read through um, if you're a recipient. So this is a, a good example of someone who has improved, I would say, um, their, their email, their mass email design strategy. So what we're gonna do next is I'm, I'm gonna show you how to build an email um, right in Bloomerang. And we're gonna start with a layout. I'm gonna show you a few things about how to customize layouts. Both of them are gonna start from scratch and see how we can build a simple um, but beautiful email that people will be able to uh, read quickly and, and get your, your message quickly. So I'm gonna jump into my demo database. I'm gonna zoom in just a little bit. Okay. So let me first show you the end result. That way we can see kind of where we're going. Um, so if I click on this 527 Academy class, so I've already created this earlier. And while that loads, okay, so we can see this is a very straightforward um, newsletter. So I have um, a banner image, this could be your logo or maybe a, a featured image of your newsletter. I have a title. Right now I'm just using the lorem ipsum just for, for text filler, um, but I'm trying to show that even just smaller paragraphs, maybe two to three lines, um, helps keep things skimmable and easy to read. And then I have very, um, in the, these action buttons and these, these action steps are very clear to the reader. So they can see if they wanna read the full update, they can do so here. I've divided things into clear and concise chunks with another action button here. And here I've uh, created a link. So if you had, let's say a video update um, or maybe a video you wanted to share, um, we can show, I'll show you later how simple it is just to add a, a thumbnail of a video to link. And then here's an example of two columns. So even though there's two columns, it's not too busy, still keeping things simple. Um, as well as some icons for our social media. So I know your newsletters might be a little bit longer than this, have a little bit more information. 
I, I know this is a sample, but um, hopefully this will give you some techniques as and the know-how to use our editor um, and some good practices into uh, making a nice email. So I'm gonna start with a, a new template and we're gonna start customizing and recreate this email. So I'm gonna click this email icon in the left menu. You'll notice there's three options here, um, engagement surveys and email settings. Um, we have other classes on engagement surveys and um, we also have another class on how to create and send emails that go into more depth. So we won't be touching on these other options today, um, but we're gonna click on email templates. And if you haven't created an email template, this will be a blank page and there'll just be a button that says create your first template. However, I have all of my active ones here. And I'm going to click new and I'm gonna select one of our starter templates. But you'll notice we also have options for some COVID-19 templates, which have some pre-filled text and some language that might help jumpstart um, sending an update during the COVID-19 crisis. Um, and also we have these new MailChimp templates. So you are able to push lists um, to MailChimp. And we have another video um, academy class on that as well. So I'll click starter template. And as you can see, these are all starter designs. What's nice is that you can select any of these and be able to fulfill any purpose. So let's say you wanna send a transaction email to acknowledge a donation, um, but you like this design you could still click this design and, and change the filters after. Um, in this case, I'm gonna choose this event invitation. I think this is a good starting point. So I'm gonna select this one. And you notice at the top, there's three tabs. I'm not gonna to try to spend too much time on these, but you have your details tab. Um, here you'll have your left side is everything that's internal. Um, so I'll just call this a uh, sample newsletter. And purpose, I'm gonna select newsletter. And I'll just do update and newsletter. And for allow blank merge fields, this is if you were to include merge fields that perhaps some of your recipients might not have information for, would you still want to send them an email? I'm gonna leave that blank for now. And this is what your recipients will see. So the subject, um, I might just say may newsletter, and maybe we'll do big updates. I'll put my name in here. And I'll put my work email. Okay, so that's all required and I filled that out. We won't touch on filters today. Right now this is a constituent email, but if let's say I wanted to acknowledge transactions, I could click change filter type and I could change this to transaction. Or if I needed to um, acknowledge like a volunteer hour or perhaps like an event uh, that they registered for, then I would use like an interaction email filter. But for now, I'm gonna just do um, constituent. And if I leave this blank, um, this will just be all of my active constituents in my database. So this is fine for today's purposes. Um, and we have other videos on going more into depth on reporting and filtering and Bloomerang. So here's the design tab. So I already have this pre, this ready to go layout. Um, so I have some elements that I like. Um, I just wanna show you that you can customize these things and move around. So let's say, for instance, I didn't want this logo at the top, I can just click inside this green border box. And notice that when I click on this, it says content properties. So I know I'm clicking on a piece of content. And if you notice, if I hover just outside of that, I have a dark green box. And if I click outside, notice now this tab is highlighted and it says row properties. So a, a key, um, the key functionality of our editor is that there are rows and then there are content blocks. And content must be placed inside a row um, and rows can be stacked on top of each other but not inside of each other. So notice that I'm clicked on this row out here. And if I click inside, I have this image content here and content here. And notice as I'm hovering, you can see there's a green flag at the bottom. So here it says content. This is also content, but once I hover outside, notice that it says structure. So structure um, implies that this is a row. So right here I have a, a single row with two columns and it has image content with text content, text content, and button content. So all of these elements are in place, are placed inside of this one row. 
And I could move this entire row if I would like to. Let's say I want to move this near the top if I wanted to. I could just drag this entire row and I could place it near the top. So for today's purposes, I'm going to just start from scratch. So what I could do is I could either delete each of these individually. If I want to just delete this image, I could hover over it, click on it, and I could select this trash can icon and remove that image. And I could also remove that image. Or I could just remove the entire row. If I click outside where it says structure, now I'm highlighting the entire area here and click delete. And I'm going to go ahead and just delete everything. We're going to start from scratch just so we can see what it looks like. So right now I only have my contact information. Notice this is locked. See this little lock icon. Um, every mass email requires um, that you have contact information and unsubscribe options. So this will be um, a part of every mass email that's being sent through Bloomerang. So right now I have my settings tab over here. So if I notice if I click on here, I have general options. This will be um, affecting your entire email design. So first I'm gonna just drag some rows into this email. So I wanna do a single row right up here. And I have some options for skinny and wide, um, not so skinny and a little less wide. And I have a 50-50 and then same with the opposite, a little bit wider left column, skinnier right. I can do three columns and I can even go all the way down to four columns. I would recommend keeping uh, one and maybe two. Uh, four columns is fine if you're going to be doing like an image gallery, um, but having text in really skinny columns might not be the best. In this case, I'm going to do just a 50-50 row right here. And I'm going to add maybe two more rows below. So notice I don't have any content yet. Uh, I'm really just making the skeleton. I'm making the, um, the design of my email. So right now you'll notice I have this background that's set on all of my content and all of my rows. So what I can do is click settings. And here you can see I have these global settings. Um, right now my entire email is set to 600 pixels. We recommend it being between around 500 to 800. I'm going to keep mine skinnier. So I'm going to go all the way down to 500 and keep it pretty skinny. So notice the content will be um, within that 500 pixels, but the background will be will be extending um, to the rest of the screen. And I'm going to keep these transparent. So if I click on each of these and select this transparent icon up here, now I've cleared that out. And then if I click on the content area, so that's notice inside here, each of these pieces of content, I can hit clear as well. So now I have a nice, uh, everything is cleared out as far as colors. The global link color, perhaps I want to have a nice green. And so I'll change that to our blue meringue green. And for the default font, I'm going to choose Helvetica. So that's going to affect every um, piece of content I add into my, my email. OK. So now I have my content. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add just um, the pieces I want into each side. So I'm going to put an image at the top. So when I, I can just click and drag these. And notice that anywhere that it says drag it here, so I could place in any of these rows, perhaps down here in the footer, any of these columns. In this case, I'm going to put an image up here. And I'm going to put a couple text blocks right below it. So notice, as long as that green line is um, spanning that whole row, then that's where it's going to drop. And I'm going to put another one just directly below that. I recommend if you have a, let's say like a label and um, a paragraph below to make two separate text blocks. So in this case, I might do like um, May newsletter. So if I highlight all this, and I can't type when people are watching me. And I'm going to center this. I'll make it bold. And I'm going to update this to 20. I also recommend source font sizes to really lock down your sizes. So for, for this email, I'm making sure anything that's a header is going to be 20, and then everything else is going to be 14 That's I want to read. And let's see in here, I'm going to add some text. I'm going to add just some filler text there. And I can center this just by highlighting. And then in this text toolbar, click the center option. OK, so that allows me to have a nice little gap in between here. 
by separating those into two different content. Next, I want to add a image up here. I'm going to add Blossom Gardening. So if I click Browse, this will open up the File Manager. And you can upload images directly from your computer. Um, or you can even search for free photos um, that are public domain that are free to use um, across your mass emails. Um, if I click on, I think, Editor Images, I should have Blossom in here. There she is, Gardening. So I'll click insert. So that's a little bit big for my taste. So what I can do is click on the image itself. Right now it's set to auto width, so I can remove the auto width and drag this slider down a little bit. So I'll do about 350, that's pretty good. And here I have alt text. So let's say this is the, the label for this image. So I might just put um, blossom. And if I wanted to, I could also link this image if I wanted someone to click on it and have them navigate somewhere. I could do this so here, but um, for this purpose, I don't, I don't need a link. Uh, next, I'm going to add a button. So if they want to read my full update, let's say, I'll just drag this right below my top paragraph. And now if I click on that button, notice I have my content properties. Um, I'm going to change this to read the full update here. And I'm going to change the background color again to our blue meringue green. If you have the hex code available for your organization, if there's, let's say, certain branding colors that you are using, um, then you can just type in those hex codes here. So I'm going to keep that to that green. Um, and this looks good. I, could, I can make this a more square button if I wanted to. In this case, I'm going to just keep it at four for that nice rounded rectangle. And now for the button, notice it has this link type. So if I wanted to, let's say, send this to our website, I could just do bloomerang.co. And so this will, anytime anyone push or clicks on this button or taps on this button, they'll be sent right to our website. And next I'm going to add a divider, because then I'm going to have um, just another couple of paragraphs below here. So actually what we're going to do is I'm going to add another content row right there. So I'll put a divider directly below this button. And if I click on this divider, I have some options. I'm going to increase this to two. This gray is fine. And I'm going to just reduce this to about 75. I like the way that looks when it's not spanning the entire email, but that's just a taste thing. Some of these things are subjective. <laughs> And I'm going to add some other content. So I'll try to go th through these quickly just so you can see um, some other op uh, available options too. But I'll um, drag some text here, and I'm going to drag another text right below that. Let's say I'll just put uh, thanks for your support. And again, I'm going to make this like a header. So I'll just do 20 and bold. And I'm going to leave this um, a line left. And then I have some text that I've made. But what you can do is if you need to add a bullet point, just simply click on this bullet list. And now you can have bullet points ready to go. So let's say if I wanted to make this bullet points, I could do so. And what's fun is I can hit undo button. So if I didn't like something, I always hit this undo button down here and get that back to where I need it. So I'm going to paste in my text. I believe if I highlight that like this, I might have to enter after each one. There we go. So now I have a nice bulleted points. I can even bold certain objects if I wanted to. Again, this is just to help emphasize these bullet points. So um, it never hurts to even emphasize numbers or um, specific messages you're trying to get inside of a paragraph. And lastly, I'm going to update this whole text size. OK. And I'm going to add just another divider below that. And this is good for, for the time being. So um, next, we're going to add another. Let's add another button below here. Let's say I want to link to my donate page. I'll just drag another button. And again, I'm going to change the background color to my bloomerang green. 
And I'm gonna to link to my website. So here I have my donate page with my Bloomerang form. That's still loading, there we go. And I'm gonna paste that into the, the URL for the link type. And I'm gonna just do, um, it's always good, I recommend to have a, a more engaging um, button. So rather just donate, perhaps something like um, support our mission. There we go. Okay. Let's add one more row. You can see on the fly how much we can move things around. So what I'm actually going to do is drag this one from down here above these two. There we go. Let's add the next thing is our that video uh, thumbnail. So if I click content, and here's a video content, I'll drag that in here. And it says add a video URL. So if I click on here, um, if I use a YouTube or a Vimeo URL, um, I, I'm able to have a thumbnail automatically generated. So uh, let me go to our, I have a link to our one of our updates. There we go, whoops. So I'm gonna highlight the entire uh, URL. It's important to get everything, including the protocol at the beginning. So I'm gonna copy that. And then I'm gonna just paste it right here into my video URL. And once I hit enter, it's like magic. There we go, and I have my thumbnail. And it even includes a, a icon, a play icon right above it. So you don't have to worry about um, if, it's, if you need to add a, a play icon ab above your thumbnail, um, this will prompt your, your recipients to click on this image um, and it will send them to YouTube. So it won't play inside the email. Again, that's a limit of HTML emails, but it will navigate them to um, your YouTube page or the link you provided. And I can even change the type. Let's say I want a, a rectangle and maybe a little bit bigger. There we go. And maybe I want to add some padding. So instead of just a, straightforward uh, video here. Maybe I wanna have a text label above it. I could just drag that above. Maybe I'll say uh, video update from the CEO staff. And I'm gonna highlight that and I'm gonna center it and make it like a header, so I'll do 20. Let's say I wanna make this entire row uh, a dark gray. So what I could do is click on this row. So notice if I click on the image, I have content, but if I go outside to the structure, everything that's highlighted in that green is what I'm affecting. So I'm gonna click on structure and row background color. Right now it's set to transparent. I'm gonna change it to this dark gray. And then what I need to do also is change my text to white. So I'll just highlight this text color, I'll do white. Now it's easy to see. And I wanna add some padding around this image just, just so it doesn't bump up right against the bottom. Notice that there's no space where the thumbnail meets the gray. So I'm gonna click on my content again and I can add padding on all sides. So maybe I can just click this up to maybe 15. If I wanted to, I could just add it specifically on the bottom. And there we go. So that looks pretty good. Okay, next I'm gonna add a couple columns to the bottom. So I'm gonna click content again. So I have my, here's my row that has two columns. So I'm gonna have uh, two images with two buttons below them with, with a little bit of a paragraph in between. So I'm just gonna drag all those elements now. So I'll drag an image here, an image here. I'm also gonna add some text below each. So notice that the green line is exact width I want it, which is right below this image and I'll do some right here. And then let's also add two buttons below each one of those. So I'll do a button here and a button right there. Nice and uniform. So now I'm gonna add some images. So I'll click browse. And while this loads, all right, I'm gonna add this image of people, looks like they're volunteering. Perfect, and I'll click browse over here. I'm gonna to try to show off a, a point that usually gets made. So if I click insert on this one, perfect, all right. So notice how these are 
slightly off. They're not perfectly uniform. And the reason being is that they're different dimensions. So imagine like a piece of paper, like a photograph. You always, you have a three by five, you have five by sevens, you have eight and a half by 11. So it's not a matter of the size of the photo. It's a, it's a matter of how the photo is cropped and, and the dimensions of the photo. So in order for these to align correctly, I see this question a lot in support, is how do I get these photos to match? Is you need to crop them to the same dimension. So I'm gonna crop them both to this similar, this looks like it's almost a square, not quite. It's about, it's about a five by four dimension, it looks like. So what I can do is to be sure is I click on this image and I can click on apply effects and more. This is gonna bring up, we have an in-app editor and what you want is crop. And notice you have these dimensions up here, like I mentioned, five by four. So right now it's 16 by nine. So this appears to be a 10 by eight, but let's say I wanna make it uh, five by four or even four by three. So what I'll do is I'll do five by four. And I'll click apply and then I can hit save. You see there's some other options for editing images too. So just text overlay, um, you can even add some filters. So it doesn't look like that one's changed much, but now what we'll do is the exact same dimension on this image. So I'll click on this image on the right, click apply effects, and I'll go to crop, and I'll go to five by four again. So now you can see it's cutting off these right sides of the image. I can even drag this maybe so it's a little bit more centered for, on the people, and I'll click apply, and now I will click save. And now, just like magic, these images are gonna be perfectly aligned once this loads. There we go. So now those are perfectly set. And if I really wanted to, let's say if I don't want these bumping up against each other, just click on one of the images and scroll down to padding. And maybe I'll just add about 10 pixels of padding on each side. So I'll click on this one as well and just keep it uniform. Sounds a little bit smaller, but they're not bumping up right against each other. And perhaps I wanna add a label with some, um, text below. I'm actually going to add another text block above each of these. And we'll do, how about volunteers needed? Move all that. I'll center this and bold it and put that to 20 again. And let's say I just want to add some filler text again. Might be a little too much for this purpose, but that's good right there. And same on this side, whoops. Here we go. Let's say for this one, I'll do uh, upcoming event. And again, I'm just to keep things uniform. 20 bold centered. And we're just gonna put the exact same text over here. And same for these buttons, I'm gonna keep them. Uh, let's see, I'll do like find out more, for, let's say. And maybe on this one I will do uh, register now, whoops. And notice this one's set to 16, this one's to 12, so I can just change that to 16 again. And if I click on the button, I'll change the background color to my bloomerang green for each. And then again, I can add links to these. So um, for this case, I'm just gonna add our website. But possibly you have um, obviously some more specific links for these, I'm just trying to get through these quickly. Okay. And again, just so my best practices are in store, adding alt text to each of the images is a good, a good practice. So here, if I click on this image, you notice know, alt text, maybe I'll do volunteers. And if I click on this image, Maybe I'll say our event uh, 2019 from last year. Okay, last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just add our social icons to the footer. So I'll click on content. And notice we have the social content block. I'll just drag this down here. And I don't need uh, this row actually. So I'm just gonna click on it and delete. And then what we're gonna do is click on this content here. And now I have my content properties for my social icons. Uh, maybe I don't want the colorful ones. I wanna keep it simple. So I'm gonna just do these dark gray ones. And we don't have a LinkedIn for my organization. So I'm gonna just do 
my Facebook, my Twitter, my Instagram. I can even add some spacing between these icons and some padding just to keep things nice and right in the center. There we go. And now for each of these, I could add our um, organization's Facebook handle. So in this case, um, ours is Bloomerang Tech for all of them. So I'll just do Bloomerang Tech and So now when they click on each of these icons, they'll be directed right to um, your Facebook, Twitter, Instagram page. If they're on a mobile device, it will open up that app, which is nice. Um, so if they were, let's say on an iPhone or an Android device um, and click on that, it would open up Facebook and um, bring them to our page. And last thing I can do is make this footer kind of stand out a little bit more. I'll just click on the row so that where it says structure. And for the row background color, I'm gonna change it to dark gray. Let's see, or perhaps I'll do this green. There we go. Okay, and then what I can also do is um, if I wanna add padding on the top, maybe just a little bit of space here, I could do so. Okay. And let's say I'm gonna add padding on the bottom of my row here. I can just increase this leave a little bit of space at the bottom. Okay. And just like that, we have blazed right through a, a mass email. Um, obviously, I think your organization probably have a lot more information and, and probably spend a little bit more time uh, crafting your message. Um, but as far as the design, I'm, I'm happy with this. And I want to make sure everything is uniform. I noticed right here that this divider line um, might not be needed, but what I'm going to do is at least have it match this one. So I can just increase uh, this to two, put that down to 75 again. Um, and now everything's nice and uniform. Okay. And the last thing I wanna highlight is um, just some of these options up here. So uh, let's say you wanted to add your, your newsletter or your email to your website. One way you could do so is just clicking this get HTML button. And that will generate, you'll see my a Chrome, I'm sure you can see, but it'll add that to my downloads folder and I'll have an HTML file that I can add to my website. I can preview the layout. This is a great tool. If I click here, this is what it's gonna look like on a desktop. So I can see that everything is, notice it's between that 500 pixel um, width. So all my content is on this nice and skinny in the middle and everything seems to be rendering how I would like on a desktop. And if I click mobile, what's really nice is I can see how everything stacks. So it doesn't shrink everything. So my text is still nice and readable. My buttons are still nice and large. Great for someone who's gonna be just clicking it or tapping it with their finger. And you can see my images now are, are full width. So instead of having two columns, now I have images that can be seen nice and, nice and clear and the buttons are still nice and large and able to be clicked. And notice now instead of these being stacked side by side, they're now stacked on top of each other. So I'm happy with this. So now I can click X to get back to my designer. And I would recommend if you click the send test, you can send up to three test emails. It won't populate with any um, constituent information or donation information, but um, you'll at least be able to see how it renders. So I could send one to my work email if I wanted to. And there's also the Ahern audit. Um, this will scan your email and it's looking for the U-test. You can read more um, about the U-test and its effectiveness and um, why it's important in crafting your messages to, um, to use U um, and also the flesh Kincaid reading level. So mine's right at that eighth grade reading level, which is what I want. And again, you have your filter tab if you want to double check the recipients you'll be sending to, uh, make sure your subject line's what you're wanting as well as a from email address. And then it's just a matter of clicking save and preview. And once again, I'll get a, a quick preview of my email and I'll even be able to see uh, how it's gonna appear. Um, let's say if I had a merge field for names in here, I could see that um, in real time. And you can see this is filled out with my contact information as well as unsubscribe options near the bottom. 
and I can click through the first 100 recipients to see how it's going to appear. Since I don't really have any constituent information in this email, um, it will look the same for everyone. But if I did have a, a name, let's say if I wanted to add that real quick, I can click make changes. Just so I can show you how to add a merge field so you can personalize a mass email a little bit more. Let's say right here at the top, I wanted to add a um, hey and their informal name. What I could do is place my cursor. I want to add the merge field. Here in this text toolbar, I'll click more and then insert merge field. And I will look up informal name and I'll click insert field. I don't need that space or have the asterisk, so I'll just delete that. And there we go. So now I have an informal name near the top. And if I click save and preview this time, we'll see that's going to populate with um, each recipient's informal name. So for Acme Corporation, their informal name is Bugs for their primary contact. And I can see Johnny Appleseed right there. It says, hey, Johnny. So now I can just see that everything is going to be um, rendering how I'm expecting. I appreciate everyone coming in today and being really active. It's great to see lots of questions and everyone um, talking in the chat and hopefully learning something today. So um, we'll be doing another class on this um, this week, but we'll have lots more in the future on a variety of topics. So I hope everyone's staying safe. Um, really en enjoy being able to run these classes with everyone, uh, but have a great rest of your Wednesday and a great rest of your week. And we will see you next time. Take care, everyone.